sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. 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 And for that, we are so grateful to God. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Good morning, Mother. So good to see you this morning. Uh, we started early this morning at 10 o'clock this morning. We uh, participated in sunrise uh, service, which was at 545. A.M. over at Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Marbury, Maryland this morning. And uh, we decided to start earlier this morning. Amen. <laughs> because of that. But we're so glad to see you this morning. Come and, and worship with us this morning. Amen. We can praise God because he has a word for us this morning. Amen. I'm so glad to see you all out today on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Dedicated, constant, and consistent members. Amen. Amen. That are here every Sunday. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First, give me honor to God and to His Son, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit that is here. To uh, First Lady Harris, to Deaconess Warren, to the Deaconesses in training, the Deacon in training. We praise God for all of you, our members, and our guests. Uh, praise God for you. Amen. 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 The young, the young men are are acting um, studious this morning. Amen. <laughs> They're studying and and uh, focusing and praising God. I love it when they clap their hands and they try to get the words to the song and they do a praise wave. Amen. That shows that. There's, there's praise and worship going on in the home as well. Amen. 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 Because if it wasn't going on at home, it wouldn't be going on here. Yes, Amen. Amen. So that warms my heart to see that this morning. Amen. 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 Please turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We've been journeying with Luke throughout this season. From Luke 9, 51, where Jesus started, turned his face toward Jerusalem, to his destiny, and he knew he had a work to do for the Lord. Amen. And we journeyed with him all the way to Jerusalem. Certainly, we know if you participated in Good Friday services or listened to them in some way, that Jesus gave his life on the cross. Amen. Amen. On Good Friday. And today, after every Good Friday, there's what? The Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Amen. Luke 24, 1 through 12. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It's also projected on the wall. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found, thank you brother, but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. 
Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed marveling to himself at what had happened. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. Please pray with me on the topic, Receiving Resurrection Revolution. Receiving Resurrection Revolution. You have space for your notes on the back of the bulletin. Receiving Resurrection Revolution. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we ask you right now that you would come and speak clearly and boldly through me, that you would hide me behind your cross, O God, that you would allow your words to come forth boldly with and with power, with clarity and with understanding. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence right now. It's in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Receiving resurrection revolution. Amen. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines revolution as the usually violent attempt by many people to end the rule of one government and start a new one. You can think of the American Revolution. It also defines revolution as a sudden, extreme, or complete change in the way people live, work, etc., I like that second one. A revolution is a sudden, extreme, or complete change in the way people live, work, etc. Since the beginning of this year, 2018, the word revolution has been on our weekly prayer request. Have you noticed that? Every single week, we've been called to pray for a revolution. Right here in new life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. That a revolution that God would send a sudden and extreme and complete change in the way people live, work, etc. I'm so glad that God led me to include that word in our prayer request and to include it in today's sermon and to connect it from the prayer request to the message today. Amen. In the lives of this ministry. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Amen. On March 31st, 1968, that was 50 years ago yesterday, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. preached his last Sunday morning sermon at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. His sermon was titled, Remaining Awake Through a Great Revolution. He used as a text Revelation 16, Behold, I make all things new. Former things are passed away. He proceeded to recount the story of Rip Van Winkle, who went up into the mountain. When he went up, the sign was there that had a picture of King George III of England. When he came down, After sleeping for 20 years, the sign had a picture of George Washington, the first president of the United States. Dr. King explained, and this reveals to us, that the most striking thing about the story of Rip Van Winkle is not merely that Rip slept 20 years, but that he slept through a revolution. While he was peacefully snoring up in the mountain, a revolution was taking place that at points would change the course of history. And Rip knew nothing about it. He was asleep. Yes, he slept through a revolution. 
And one of the great liabilities of life is that all too many people find themselves living amid a great period of social change. And yet they fail to develop the new attitudes, the new mental responses that the new situation demands. They end up sleeping through a revolution. Needless to say, Dr. King proceeded to present the case to stay awake through a great revolution because of the opportunities for God to demonstrate great transformation, great transformational revolutionary power in the lives around the world. In many respects, Dr. King's words are just as relevant and needed today as they were 50 years ago. Sadly to say, and worse than sleeping through today's call for gun justice, too many people are sleeping through God's resurrection revolution in the spirit realm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Worse than sleeping through what's going on in social change in this country, too many people are sleeping through God's Resurrection revolution. Yes, yes. Amen. In the spirit realm. Amen. Amen. Some of the same cultural diagnoses. Mm-hmm. Amen. That existed 50 years ago. Yeah. Still exist today. Amen. Traumatic stress. Caused by gun violence. Yes. By police against people of color. Yes. For no other reason than the need to be who they are. Amen. Traumatic stress in schools and at home caused by gun violence. Systemic oppression covered up by higher interest rates and so-called full housing. You know, when you fill out that application for that apartment and they tell you that they're all filled up, you don't know because of the color of your skin whether they're telling you the truth or not. I'm talking about systemic oppression. When you go buy that new car and they make it sound like you got the best rate we could get you. But if you were to talk to somebody of of the majority and found out that they got a rate that was half of yours Mm -hmm. from the same dealer on the day before you got yours. Or maybe even the day after, then you got to wonder Mm -hmm. what is going on. I'm talking about systemic oppression covered up by claims of the lowest unemployment rates for people of color. Y'all heard the president the other day. While ignoring the fact that such rates are still higher than our white counterparts. Amen. Abandonment experienced by too many children because fathers aren't held accountable to be present in the home. Abandonment of our communities by churches that would rather stay inside and be comfortable than to really be a revolutionary force in our communities and a revolutionary force that changes lives. I'm talking about receiving resurrection revolution this morning. Two days ago, Christians across the world celebrated Good Friday. Solemnly remembering that moment in salvation history when Christ died on the cross for our sins. Indeed, Jesus of Nazareth was unjustly accused of blasphemy, saying that he is God. That was an unjust accusation because he was telling the truth. Nevertheless, there was an illegal trial with trumped up charges by the religious ruling elite who were scared and desperate to hold on to power and they needed to get Jesus out of the way. Why? Because Jesus has started a revolution. Amen. A revolution was underway and the people in power had to get control of what was going on. So they conspired and they colluded with the Roman authorities who reserved the right of execution within occupied and oppressed Israel. Jesus was brutally tortured and delivered to Golgotha Hill. 
That torture included being whipped on his back. That torture included his skin being ripped open by the pieces of metal and the hooks that were in the leather straps that went across his back. That torture included putting a crown of thorns on his head and saying, you are king, act like a king. That's that torture included being beat up by strong Roman soldiers. That torture included having to carry his own cross and getting so weak when he fell down, they pulled somebody out of the crowd. Yes. Simon from Cyrene, from Northern Africa, and said, you carry his cross for him. Jesus was that beat down. They took him and they crucified him. Yes. They put him up on that cross. They put nails in his hands, yes, yes. right in the wrist part, so that the wrist part can hold his body up. They put nails in the ankle part of the feet while he hung on that cross. Yes, yes. Can you see our Savior hanging on the cross? Yes. And while they lifted up the cross and dropped it down into the hole, that there was a jerking motion on his body. And they continued to rile him, to tease him, to challenge him. The thieves that were on one side and the other, criminals that deserved capital punishment, that deserved to die on the cross. Between them, an innocent man hanging on the cross. The one who did no sin, paying the price for all of us who did the sin. That same cultural diagnosis that we experience today was present in Jesus' community as well. Yes. While he hung on that cross, where were the disciples? They were experiencing traumatic stress. Amen. That caused them to do what? To run and hide. Amen. Amen. That systemic oppression. Amen. Delivered by the Romans and their unjust practices. The abandonment felt by Jesus himself when his closest friends left him at his moment of need, left him hanging on the cross, even looking for communion with God that had never been broken before. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me right when I need you most? We believe it was that sin that you and I did and others that piled on him that caused God to have to back off of him and break that fellowship with Jesus at that time. No matter how low you may feel in our socially messed up society, no matter how much you may struggle with your own traumatic stress, no matter how much you may be experiencing systemic oppression and abandonment, I want you to know and God wants you to know that there is one who experienced more trauma, yeah. amen, more abandonment, yeah. more systemic oppression yeah. than any of us could ever right. go through. Amen. And he was able to get up. Yeah. Yeah. He went down lower than any of us went down. Yeah. And yet God raised him up. I tell you, yeah, that's worth shouting about and that's worth celebrating. Yes. Amen. Because God's resurrection revolution, yes. amen, continued through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Resu resu resurrection revolution is when resurrection power gets you up amen. to experience a sudden and extreme and complete change in the way you live, amen. the way you work in every part of your life. Now that's good news. As Dr. King preached, stay awake through a great revolution in your life. Our text today gives us two essential ingredients to receive resurrection revolution. Based on the text, one cannot assume that just because 
You've been close to Jesus for years. Learning secrets that others didn't understand. That you will automatically receive resurrection revolution. Like these disciples that didn't believe these women. Who saw the empty tomb for themselves. You too are susceptible to sleeping through the resurrection revolution. We've got to stay woke, church. Amen. The first essential ingredient to receive resurrection revolution is remembrance. Remembrance. Let's look at the text. Verses 5 through 8 show us what went down. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said, to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Amen. When I read that text, I was surprised that since Jesus had told them that this was getting ready to happen, that they didn't hold on to those words and know what was getting ready to happen. And then as it unfolded, they would remember, oh, this is what Jesus was talking about. But before I get too critical about them, I have to look at myself. I have to realize how susceptible I am. That when I read the word, I don't always remember what God told me. That that's why we got to read it over and over and over and over again. That's why even when you go back to the same text, you get something new out of it. Something else gets revealed out of it. So before you get too hard about pressing on them, realize the first essential ingredient to revolution in our lives is remembrance. I found it troubling in my spirit, amen, that we're so fragile like that, that we're so susceptible to forgetting what God has told us. I tell you, we need to stay in God's word, amen. Sometimes when we read and hear the word, we don't always understand it, but the spirit has to connect with us and has to pull it out of our memory that we might remember what God said. That's why Psalms 119, 105 causes us to live and to shout when we read that your word is a lamp unto my feet yeah. and a light unto my path. In Psalms 119, 9 and 11, we have to remember that we can come alive when we say, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to your word? Your word have I hid in my heart. So I might remember so I won't sin against you. 1 John 1, 9 comes alive when we remember it and say, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Philippians 4, 13 comes alive in our lives yeah. when we remember I can do all things, all things through Christ that strengthens me. And Psalms 150 verse 6 comes alive in our lives when we remember what it says, that let everything, everything. that has breath yeah. praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. I tell you, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper here in a few, remembrance is a key ingredient. Yes, yes there's some bread there. Yes. yes, there's some juice from the fruit of the vine. Yes. But the key ingredient in our experiencing and taking the Lord's Supper yes. is remembrance. Yes. Remembering what Jesus did. Yes. Remembering how he suffered on the cross. Yeah, yeah. Remembering how he gave his body yes. represented by that, bro yes. by that bread. Yes. How his blood was shed for us yes. represented by that juice. Yes. And you remember what he said as he gave them the bread. Yes. He said, well, as often as you do it, do it what? In remembrance of me. Yes. Likewise, when he took the cup and he gave them the cup, 
as often as ye drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. We have to remember what Jesus told us. Amen. Keep it in mind. Yes. The first essential ingredient is remembrance. Yes. And when you remember what Jesus has told you, then you're ready for the second essential ingredient to receive resurrection re revolution. That second essential ingredient is recognition. Recognition. Let's look at verses 8 and 9. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Amen. Recognition. Amen. The response of the women showed that they remembered and recognized the truth. They remembered what Jesus had said. And they recognized that Jesus was a truth teller. That what he said came true. Amen. And sure enough, he got up out of the grave. Amen. That sprung them into action. Yes. That was good news. And they couldn't keep that good news to themselves. They had to go and tell somebody else. Yes. So they went as fast as they could. And found the 11 apostles and where they were hiding and the others. And went and told them, look what we, let me tell you what we saw with our own eyes. Yes. We saw an empty tomb and Jesus was gone. Yeah. The angel was there and told us that Jesus had arisen. He asked us, in fact, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? He is alive. He has risen. Yeah. Can you see the excitement that's in their hearts? Yes. Can you feel the excitement that was in their words? And that's the other strange thing is the reaction of the disciples in the face of good news. Even though the women went and told them what they had witnessed with their own eyes. Yeah. They got received as being telling idle tales. Mm -hmm. As telling stories. Yeah. As telling things that don't make sense. Yeah. I tell you, you're going to run into people like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. As you get out of these four walls yeah. and you share with them. Yeah. Hey, I've got some good news for you. Yeah. Jesus died for you. Jesus loved you so much that he died on the cross yes. for your sins. Yes. You were destined for hell, but because Jesus loved you so much, yes. he died in your place yes. that you don't have to stay on that hell-bound train. Yes. Jesus offers you salvation yes. for free. He's already paid the price. Yes. And people are going to look at you like, yes. is that all you got? <laughs> I need something now. But you can tell them we serve a right now God. Yes. They'll still look at you like, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. But I can't see God. Mm -hmm. I can't taste God. Yes. I can't feel God. Mm -hmm. I can't touch God. Yes. And you have to let them to tell them the story that that mother told uh, to her son. Yes, when he said that he was going to stop serving God. Mm -hmm. And the next day he came with the with the toothache. Yes, sir. Amen. And she proceeded to ask him, uh, can you touch the toothache? Can you see the toothache? Can you examine the toothache? He said, no. Nah. Well, she said, well, that's how the spirit of God is. Even though you can't touch them, you can still feel them just like you feel that toothache. That's the evidence that you have because there's a change going on in your life. Because when you encounter the God of resurrection revolution, a change is going to come into your life. You're not going to be the same anymore. You can tell them with the excitement in your heart that when Jesus came into my life, he turned me around. He changed my heart and filled it up with love that I had never experienced before. In fact, I meant to bring out the board from in the back because I wanted to draw a little picture for you. Can you go get it for me? Thank you, son. Sorry, I forgot I forgot I was going to do this part. Amen. Amen. I want to show you something that I had drawn that the excitement of God was so powerful in my life. Amen. Back And y'all know my story back when I was in college. Amen. Amen. In that first year of, of college and got away from church and got to drinking and carrying on. Amen. But then on that Thursday evening in the spring... God brought me to a revival yes. and changed my life around. Amen. Amen. And then 
that following my sophomore year, yeah, oh, I need a pen too. <laughs> that sophomore year, thank you. I was so excited about the Lord that I drew, I drew this picture I'm getting ready to draw for you. Oh, is that what you were saying? And I drew this picture and I hung it up on my dorm, on my dorm window. Thank you. Because I wanted people to know resurrection revolution. Yes. Amen. You ought to be declaring the goodness of God in some fashion in somebody else's Amen. life. Amen. And so I drew this picture up on a piece of paper. And I hung it in my window outside of my blind so that when people walked by, there was a walkway right there outside my, my door, outside my room. So when they walked by, they could see this. Yes. And I wrote, wrote on here. Yes, you Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 What I found is that when I drew that and hung it up on my window, mm. amen, it was also a point of accountability. Yes, amen. Because I couldn't live any way I wanted to. Because right. I hung a sign up yeah. that said Jesus saves. Because yeah. I wanted people to know that Jesus saves. Amen. I wanted them to know that there's resurrection power. Yeah. I wanted them to know that they too can experience a resurrection revolution in their lives. Yeah. That even if I wasn't there to share it with them, yes. that they could see the message that Jesus can turn you around yes. and that Jesus saves. Yes. That the power of the cross, amen, can make a difference in their lives. Yes. I tell you, people, like I said, it held me accountable as well. Because yes. I knew I just couldn't slip back yes. to what I used to do. Yes. I had to keep pressing forward. Yes. And God had to keep moving me forward. Amen, amen. There were people that would walk by and want to cover it up with another piece of paper on the outside window. Yes. And I'd have to come by and take that down. Yes, but that's when I knew that it was working. Yes. Amen. Because when they wanted to cover up the power of God, yes. the simple sy symbol of the cross, yes. the simple words that Jesus saves, yes. hallelujah, just started making a difference in people's lives. Yes. And the devil got busy and he got angry. Yes. And he tried to take it down and cover it up. Yes. Amen. But God is more powerful than the enemy. Yes. Amen. And that mess just couldn't stand. Yes. Amen. Amen. I tell you, when you call on the name of Jesus, yes. amen, you feel stronger inside. When you set your face, amen, and know that God has set you free. Yes. Amen. The demons tremble yes. when you call on the name of Jesus. Amen. You get a yes built up in your spirit when you call on the name of Jesus. Amen. When you recognize Jesus' salvific power, when you know that Jesus saves, when you know that no matter how far you can drift away from God, Jesus Christ is there to save you. I tell you, you, you get happy inside. I tell you, you can celebrate God's resurrection revolution. Amen. That's going on in your own life. I tell you, when one remembers Jesus' words yes. and recognizes that Jesus is God's son yes. and speaks truth, amen, then one can see what Dr. King was saying on April 3rd, 1968 at the Bishop Charles Mason Temple, which was the headquarters of the Church of God in Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, let me just pause right there. He preached his last sermon on Sunday at the National Cathedral, which is an Episcopal church. Now, I listened to the video. There were no amens. There was no noise going on while he was preaching. That's the environment he was in. But the way Dr. King is and the way he was accepted on Sunday, he was in an Episcopal church in Washington, D.C. On Wednesday, April 3rd, he was in a Kojic church where people were shouting and praising God, saying amen after every sentence he said. Amen. They were talking back to him. Amen. Like we do in the black church. Amen. Amen. So here Dr. King found himself 
uh, there sharing with the people because he was one that had experienced God's resurrection revolution in his life. He remembered Jesus' words and he recognized who Jesus was. So when he got there, he declared that he had seen the promised land. He declared, let us rise up tonight with a greater readiness. Let us stand with a greater determination. And let us move on in these powerful days. These days of challenge to America to make America a better nation. And I want to thank God once more for allowing me to be here with you. He concluded his speech by saying, we've got some difficult days ahead. But it doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. He said, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, he said, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Amen. And then he sat down to a tremendous, thunderous applause. Amen. Clearly. Clearly, Dr. King remembered God's promises and he recognized God's truth. Amen. And sovereignty in the situation. You would do well to follow Dr. King's example of remembering and recognizing God's word. As great of an example as Dr. King was, he wouldn't say to follow him. He would tell you like I'm getting ready to tell you. That there's one greater than Dr. King. Dr. King and I want you to follow Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the one. Amen. That can make a difference. Jesus is the one that you need to remember. Jesus is the one that you need to recognize as you go along your Christian journey. While you're remembering and we're celebrating the Lord's Supper today. Remember that it was Jesus that when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Had to bow down and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. He had to recognize that even on the cross, amen, that God was with him. And he called out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He knew who who was in control. He knew who who was in charge. Remembrance and recognition are essential ingredients our divine ingredients to receive resurrection, revolution, worthy of all praise and all glory. Amen, amen. The doors of the church are wide open. You may find yourself realizing that you've just been coming to church and never really allowed Jesus to come into your heart and make a change in your life. We invite you to come and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. Is there one today? Is there one today? Never surrender to the Lord. The Lord is calling on you right now. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Is there one today? Is there one today? You want to experience this life that we're talking about, a revolution and change, a shifting can occur in your life. You may be looking for a church home. We invite you to make new life your church home. Continue to grow and be a dynamic disciple for Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there one today? Is there one today? Amen. 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 As you leave today, I just want you to remember receiving resurrection revolution. Amen. And call on the name of Jesus. Amen. And he'll make a difference in your life. Amen. Amen. We invite.